Our first speaker for the afternoon is uh, P. Jagannathan. Uh, a lot of us call him as Jagan. Uh, Jagan's worked uh, for, I don't know, a few decades with BNHS. He works with NCF. He works on, uh, he's a bit of a madman, you know, suddenly gets into dragonflies, suddenly gets into birds, suddenly gets into various things. But uh, he is one of the, f he's probably the only person in India who tried to do a, well, sorry, he did his PhD um, on probably the, one of the rarest birds in the world. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about it, so I'm going to let him talk about his search for the most elusive birds in the world. Jagannathan, over to you. So whichever the half which you want to attend, and uh, I leave it to you. So it's going to be like this. So it's going to be two parts. So I'm going to talk about two birds which, which are critically endangered and uh, thought to be extinct. And some people still believe that you know they are there, and I'm one of them. So I'm going to talk about two birds which is which are um, present here. This is a Jordan scosa, critically endangered, thought to be extinct, and rediscovered again. And then uh, Mount Himalayan quail, known as mountain quail, uh, in Uttarakhand. This is in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So I'll talk a bit more elaborative about this scosa, uh, and then a bit about uh, quail. So I'll, I'll talk about whether they are uh, extinct or not, and uh, why we uh, think that whether it's not extinct or whether it's extinct, and things like that. So the part one would be how to lose a species in 10 years. That's Jordan's Corsa. So we have three Corsas in India. This is cream colored Corsa, and this is beautiful Indian Corsa, which these two birds uh, like completely open uh, area. They walk a lot. Mo most of the Corsas walk a lot. Uh, and then the third one we have is Jordan's Corsa, which uh, is confined to uh, Andhra Pradesh. And it's quite a peculiar bird, which is nocturnal. Uh, active only during the night time and walks a lot. And it was thought to be extinct uh, for about 86 years and then rediscovered in a um, place called Lankamale, uh, I mean, place called Redipalli. Uh, and then the place uh, where it was rediscovered was uh, declared as a sanctuary. And uh, these are the historical distribution of the Jordan's Corsa. As you can see, it's scattered here and there. And, and it is there in the northern part of Andhra Pradesh. And now it is Telangana. And uh, it's all, you know, you can, you can see it's all he scattered here and there. There is no, uh, and also the last record before the rediscovery was 1900. And uh, so this is the place where I worked. You can see this Kadapa Crescent, geologists would know, very beautiful shape. And uh, the Lankamalais is here. And this is the shape of the uh, sanctuary, and this is another sanctuary. So we worked here for many years. Uh, after the rediscovery, not much research has been done. People know that they occur there, but people go, bird watchers and photographers go there and take photograph and come back. But not many people studied them. So in 2000, when we, when we went, uh, we had no clue how to study them and things like that. So I'll, so this is how it looks. It's a beautiful place if you look uh, through the Google Earth. So this is the highly you know rugged terrain, and then there is an alluvial wash here. And this, this will be the dry deciduous forest. And then here, uh, the scrub jungle, or a tropical dry evergreen forest. And uh, the Jordan's course lies mainly here. So this is how the habitat looks like. Um, completely, o not completely open area, but he bushes here and there. The birds probably you know retiring during the daytime here somewhere, and then foraging here during the daytime, and picking up insects and termites and ants and things like that, and then come back during the daytime here. So the, the, the traditional method to uh, look for the bird is by the shikar, uh, the hunters, mainly with the torch and the buzzer. The buzzer is mainly to mask the footfall of the uh, person because it's very stony and thorny and uh, you know, the bird should not hear you before uh, you, know, uh, you see them. So they use the very powerful torch and then sort of you know, uh, straddle them and then they go and catch the bird. And it's quite easy to go close to the bird and then catch them in your, with your hand as well sometimes. Uh, so, but this is okay for the uh, night, night search is okay for the, um, you know, watching them, just going and looking around, looking for it. But first day I went and then I saw the bird, second day I went the same place, but I did not see the bird. It doesn't mean that the bird is not there, just that I have not seen that. So this is not a reliable method to study them. Watching is different and studying is different. So what we did is something quite novel. Uh, we put a tracking strips or a soil strips. Uh, we collected uh, roadside uh, soil, 
those days the road was not uh, you know uh, very wide and there used used to see lot of mud and the kadappa of course uh, you know it's very hot and dusty it's very nice place to be and to work with uh, in the in the in the place and we collect the uh, lo, you know soil and then we uh, sieve it and then we put it uh, in the place where uh, we see, we have seen the courser we uh, you know where it's supposed to be occurring there and these are some of the equipment we use and uh, also we um, collected some you know the carrying this soil is very heavy i mean each one would be like you know a five four five kgs and you have to carry that in that hot sunny kadappa you know in the scrub jungle you have to walk through and three four of us will be going and then you know uh, clearing the um, uh, land and then putting up this track tracking strip is not an easy job uh, so we found it very heavy and then later we found a hot mix plant you know they mix the um, tar and the tarmac and the gravel and they dust out the uh, par, you know the very fine uh, dust and then you get that and it's very like a cement it's very nice and it's, it was easy to carry uh, in the field and then you you know we just piled on it when we saw this and uh, the footprint retains very nice in the this kind of uh, medium and this is how we do things over there we select a place and then we put a string so that it's straight and then we clear that and then put this uh, mud uh, or a sieved soil or whatever and then we use the builder's trowel to flatten it and then we uh, you know the shiny present, uh, appear, appearance should not deter the animals or birds which are uh, going through that place so we take the local soil and then camouflage it and then we did this in a uh, few places to know the how the footprint of the Jordan's Corsa looked like because the call was not known and we weren't having a camera trap those days very many so we have to rely on this uh, traditional method and then we got the uh, one or two photo, uh, you know, camera traps. Those days we had this uh, trail monster camera trap. Many of you would know. Uh, here is the camera and the receiver, and here is the uh, transmitter. So when the bird walked, uh, we could get the picture of the bird as well as we got the, you know, footprint. So this is a scrub jungle where a lot of people go in for grazing and wood cutting and things like that. So we can't risk the camera trap to be there, you know, left out over there. Overnight, we, we sort of go in the evening, keep the camera trap and then go in the morning and then take out the camera trap. We did for the two, three months and then in the morning we check what are the footprints are there, then we can relate to the camera. Uh, the you know the uh, ticking numbers over there so then we have to come back and develop I've seen this photo after you know a month after the you know the, there used to be a 36 role so only after you finish all the 36 exposure you can go and develop those things so it was quite exciting to see the bird and then we could relate it to the um, uh, you know Jordan's Corsair and you can see the poop of the Jordan's Corsair so we take the we took the um, footprint of various birds which uh, if you notice the Jordan's Corsa doesn't have uh, hallux which is uh, hind toe which you see in normal uh, country chicken so we selected the species which are doesn't have this hallux in that region and then we have uh, you know sort of made a library of uh, plaster cast of various birds as you can see these are all cursorial birds by the way so they walk a lot um, so this is how it looks so based on this and we also measure the angle between the outer toe and the inner toe and then the length of the um, you know the fingers or whatever so based on this we figured out that it is possible to identify the jordan's course of footprint uh, you know th jordan's course through by their footprint uh, as you can see only the indian courser is very wide the angle is very wide and all these are very wide and this is angle is slightly less uh, the stone curlews and uh, ch chestnut billet sand grouse come slightly closer, but uh, with uh, you know a sharp eye, you can figure out. You, you can see this uh, claws and the pads, which do not have, which Jordan's Corsa do not have. So we did this tracking strips, you know, uh, not in randomly, but in an array of uh, you know 50 to 100 meters in the scrub jungle over there. And uh, these are the places where we put tracking strips each dots um, you know will have at least 20 30 uh, tracking strips quite hard work to do and then we got the Jordan's courser in three new places where it was known to not known to occur so all within the sanctuary but this is the place where it was you know known to occur very frequently so we got it more and uh, we got it here as well so we wanted to expand at this survey which we did so just to show that you know how uh, difficult and how uh, not common this bird is so we did some 10,000 tracking strip nights and then we got only 13 uh, you know um, strip with uh, Jordan's Corsa tracks 
and the call was not known before so we recorded the call and i'll just play you the call okay. yeah so that's how the call um, sounds like it's there in wikipedia you can go and uh, check out and we was very ex very excited because you know we don't have to carry soil and we don't want to do very hard work and all we can just play the tape and then we can elicit the response but we were wrong uh, you know we got uh, we did survey all along the lankamalai foothills but we got only in three places which you know not very encouraging the bird doesn't respond um, you know very much for the call and uh, we sort of you know during the course we know we know that the bird occurs in scrub jungle but what kind of scrub jungle it 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 needs certain uh, amount of uh, you know height of bushes it should not be completely you know small bushes there should not be you know large bushes uh, so it should be mix of both so that's what we did and then based on that we sort of uh, you know uh, did a habitat suitability map and the red color indicates um, the these are really good habitat and uh, we did the survey uh, in these places but there are you know the various threats for this scrub jungle i'll just go through very quickly so this uh, habitat destruction is the one of the main thing most people clear the scrub jungle it's very easy to clear you know uh, several hectares in one day with a bulldozer and um, you know poke line and things like that slowly people are moving towards you know the, there is a road goes right next to the scrub jungle and a lot of lemon farm, farms coming up and then even the department also do lot of developmental activities within the sanctuary you know because these are all known as a you know a way, sort of you know not developed areas you know if there is a scrub jungle if there is a open area they tend to go and plant you know eucalyptus or a, a pongamia pineata or whatever inside the you know open area so we have to educate them uh, and also one of the things which i mentioned the, when the somasilla dam constructed somewhere in nellu district lot of people moved and then most of the people given land over here so as you can see lost of red dots means the recently made uh, you know developed villages so all these people go to this forest area which are you know uh, jordan's course occur there an illegal bird trapping we could not quantify but it is happening quite a bit even now and uh, the one of the major threat we faced was the telugu ganga canal uh, you know morning we heard about the linear intrusion so this is one classic example of you know how the linear intrusions affecting the critically endangered bird so this was the uh, original uh, alignment and then the i mean the people the irrigation department do not know the uh, this is a sanctuary uh, there was a communication uh, gap between the departments and then they just you know gone inside the sanctuary and then destroyed one of the places where we found the jordan's course we seen the jordan's course now it's not there so i have not recorded the jordan's course there since then so finally we have to you know fight for 2 3 years and then uh, we re realign the canal but still it's not uh, you know uh, had uh, its own impact like you can see it come very close to the we we wanted this to be like this but they they wanted to be like this so a lot of negotiation goes on and then we finally got this land whatever the land between the canal and the sanctuary is belongs to the forest department now uh, you know these are good places for the jordan's course so we wanted to concentrate our study you know with we got some quite 200 camera traps the department was very helpful and then we got some 200 reconics camera traps and we filled the uh, entire place into you know we wanted to find the bird because we got a, a very um, you know normally we get this uh, criticism where is the bird you show me uh, i mean you are saying that you have seen this and you have saying that you know you got the footprint and photographs and all but you i want to see the bird it's very difficult it's already rare and it's very secretive and it's very you know uh, elusive so it's not uh, easy to everybody and also it's since since it was uh, rediscovered the the population has declined quite drastically so 86 people would go for about an hour or so and they would see a bird the detection rate was quite high uh, they will just go for one hour and then they will see twice the bird in the same place but in when i was starting in 2000 uh, it was about we have to search for a 24 hours and then only we got two sightings and in 2008 the after the canal and all came it was you know 36 hours zero we did not see the bird so the last sighting uh, sorry the the uh, uh, reliable sighting or a, a, a record was in 2008 so that was the last time so we wanted to show that you know this bird occurs there we know that it occurs it's just that we could not find them so we did this uh, survey we this this indicates the uh, 
the dots indicates the number of camera traps we surveyed. We surveyed this place is a good place. We surveyed again, you know, basically just filling the entire place into uh, with the camera traps with our survey effort. And this is the, we got nearly about a lakh um, photographs and uh, 50,000 camera nights. The Jordan scores are zero. So these are some of the photographs we got of other birds, stone curlew, red bottle lapping, which are similar, uh, you know, habitat uh, using using the same habitat. But uh, if there is a Jordan scorer, it would have got into the camera trap. But that that was not the case. We got sloth bear, small Indian civet, and also goats, and also human beings, and also feral dogs. So yeah, so this is just a graph showing that in 2000. Uh, you know, one and 2003, this is the detection rate we had. This many times we have got the Jordan Scosa and uh, for the lapwing and for stone curlew. And if you look at the, uh, the camera trap survey, it was more for these two birds and for the Jordan Scosa, it should have been this much, but we, we don't have, we, do, we haven't got this. So one of the possible reason we could tell is that uh, after the canal, and also with a lot of uh, this kind of you know small small developmental activities within the sanctuary, the the habitat has changed. The uh, the bushes have grown too much, which made uh, this bird possibly unsuitable for this bird to live. So, can we conclude that this bird is extinct from that place? How many of you gone? Yeah. So he's saying gone. So let's see. So part two is Romeo error. So I'm going to give a small break for you. I hope it works. Sorry, poor quality video. So I couldn't download the high HD. Okay, enough. Wake up, guys. <laughs> so, Romeo error. I'm going to talk about Romeo error, which is the case study is Himalayan quail. So, this is another bird which people, you know, think that it's extinct. So, I had a chance to, you know, uh, go and look around the place where it was known to occur and um, uh, where it was reported and stuff like that last year. So, it was quite exciting. And the place there it was known to occur is Masuri and Nainital. Uh, the last record was, uh, you know, 140 years ago. Uh, and, you know, the, the records are from this kind of habitat, really high altitude. And uh, some of the people, um, you, know, mod you know, model the habitat, the possible uh, potential distribution of the, uh, this Himalayan quail. And this is Uttarakhand, and this is uh, Gadwal region, and this is uh, Kuman region. Uh, so I had a chance of walking into many of these places uh, for about two, three months, and it was very nice. Uh, of course, it was very tough. Uh, you know, I'm 40. You know, I'm in 40s. It was very, uh, you know, difficult to walk in those places. Uh, but I did find quite uh, exciting things. I'll just show you. So this, how did they come up with this? Uh, you know, the extinction. So. The, there is something called optimal linear estimation OLE uh, or OLE, uh, which was you know proposed by this Kuki 1980, uh, which was again proposed you know again reiterated by Sai Ali Khan, which we have just seen in 1994. So, if you want more information, please read that paper, or uh, you can write to Sai Ali Khan; he will tell you. So yeah, so these are the kind of habitat I was walking. And beautiful it was, you know. Uh, but still, there are some, you know, threats and uh, stuff like that. People burned the. Uh, they mainly found in uh, grassy slopes, uh, and also with a lot of, uh, you know, brushwood bushes and things like that, with rhododendron bushes, hap uh, you know, appearing in the grassy slopes. 
and uh, that place has been uh, wherever I went, you know, the road construction is happening, and uh, people burn the entire uh, grassy slopes, uh, you know, uh, for their uh, grazing thing. And also, there is a recent thing which is called Kidagas, uh, which is, you know, the Chinese found as a, a aphrodisiac. People, a lot of people go in up, uh, you know, uh, upwards. The entire village will go uh, climb the hill and then collect this Kidagas thing. So the entire habitat is destroyed. A lot of hunting is happening. So I was. Quite, quite, you know, uh, uh, depressed when I saw all these things. And we were showing the photographs of this, you know, Himalayan quail, and some people recognize this as well. So, which gives a little bit of hope. But still, people think that it's extinct. So, can we say that it's extinct? We can't really say that, you know, these are extinct. So, again, the Romeo error. I'll come back to the Romeo error. So, how many of you have read the Romeo Juliet during your college, schools, and things like that? I mean, the younger generation wouldn't have. So I'll just quickly, through four slides, I'll explain what is, uh, I'll tell you, tell about the Romeo and Juliet. Uh, so the, they met first and fall in, you know, a love, love at first sight. And then this is a famous, uh, you know, uh, pa you know, the painting. People would be, you know, most of the Bollywood uh, will have this kind of scene. And then uh, Juliet, of course, the room, they, their parents didn't say, you know, no to their uh, marriage. They said, Juliet said, okay, I'll take a portion and then, uh, you know, act as if I'm died or something. So you come back and then we'll run away. So she took that and then she was, uh, you know, but somehow the message wasn't got through to uh, Romeo. And he came and then he saw that Julia was dead. And then he didn't even, you know, check her. She, did, she should have done something, you know, see, you know, whatever. The or whatever, and uh, they are, he hasn't done that, so he just killed himself, and then he made a major error. Then she woke up and saw that this man has died. What will I do? So then he, she also killed herself. So that's a major error. So what we do is, people, uh, you know, we think that the birds are extinct without you know doing proper survey. So we have to do, we have to do thorough you know, a survey, and then only we have to tell that, okay, this, you know, like um, morning somebody said, the one of the rats were completely gone, because it is in the island, so they could do all the, uh, you know, survey, and then they said, okay, this is gone, you can't, you know, bring it back. But you can't tell for this kind of uh, species. This is called Lazarus effect, you know, technically they call many species which are th thought that, you know, they're extinct, but they come back again. Like, for example, Blue-eyed blue ground dove, beautiful bird, and it was thought to be extinct for 74 years, and it was rediscovered in 2015. And last year, there was one more ant pitta in Venezuela, they have rediscovered it. So they put enormous amount of, uh, you know, the effort to do that. And whatever we have done is not enough. So even now, the ivory-billed woodpecker, if, if you go to America, anybody, ask anybody, they will be raving about this. They will still searching for it. They are going about it. So it, it's called Lord God Bird, you know, the, one of the uh, uh, pet name for it. And Jordan's Coaster is called Ladu God Bird. I think that because it's close to the Tripati. So if they give one day, <laughs> if they give one day collection, and we can certainly do a lot of survey in Andhra Pradesh, and that will be, I mean, we need a lot of people, we can employ a lot of people, and we can certainly find this bird. So like I said, the, the place where I uh, searched is only um, Lankamalai. But there are various places which are still, you know, intact and possibly, you know, hold the species. So unless we go and search in all these places, in all the seasons, we cannot tell that this bird has gone extinct. Similarly, for Himalayan quail, so I see a lot of, you know, grassy slopes with these kind of pine and then rhododendron uh, things, which are still there. So unless you, it's very difficult terrain. So unless you go and do a lot of survey there, talk to local people, hunters and everybody, then you come up, okay, this is completely gone. So you can't really say that it's completely extinct. So what we need is this kind of chronic passion, like this is a very nice uh, uh, article you should uh, go and read, Ghost and Tiny Treasures. So this person says it's not just, you know, uh, charismatic uh, species matters, but also this kind of species also matters. We have to have a very calculated and measured passion to go and search for this kind of species. And how many people even within this room, you know, th there is a nice article in uh, NIF on the person who is going and searching for the heron. So it's a, it's a very nice article. You should go and uh, read that uh, article. So I'll stop my talk with this, uh, my favorite uh, poem, Hope is the Thing with the Feathers. Thank you, everyone.